right, guys, we got a quick and easy one today. We're going to kind of play around with the case study I've already fixed for the Autel AccuFix uh, project that I'm doing. But I wanted to show a little more information on this car because over on the Autel AccuFix, when I do a case study, they want it to be very, very limited with just, this is what fixed it. And of course, we here are more interested in what the causes are and how we can understand how to diagnose uh, other variables that may be present if that isn't the particular case uh, with the fix for this vehicle. So what we've got is a car that has an excessively long crank time, uh, but it's intermittent. I didn't really mention that on the Autel channel. We just showed when it was acting up and we fixed it. But in reality, it's intermittent, which is a much more difficult thing to identify, as you know. Um, what we've got is a really, really long crank time. Sometimes also the car will start but it has that auto start technology. So it starts, but it keeps cranking even after it starts. And it doesn't always do this. We have a P0340 code. So of course, every 98 percenter is gonna just throw a camshaft position sensor in there just based on the code. We have at least three videos, at least. And I know I have other cases where I didn't video where it is not a bad camshaft sensor and replacing camshaft position sensor or crankshaft position sensor uh, will not fix the problem. Uh, we have one case study a while ago where it was a lack of reference to the camshaft position sensor because the wiring was run along an exhaust manifold and it burned through the wiring and broke it. Replace camshaft sensor and that you're wasting your time. So of course we want to diagnose it, but we've got the complication with the intermittent. So we need to catch when this happens. And what we want to do is be able to catch when it happens and be able to tell, is this a loss of reference? Is this a loss of ground? In which case, neither of those is going to be a bad sensor. Or did we lose signal? In which case that would be a bad sensor provided we're measuring at the sensor, which we will do. With the intermittent, it's very difficult because any manipulation of the wiring, if you uh, unplug the sensor, if you move your probes around trying to do different tests, you have every possibility of then correcting the condition again. You're back to you know maybe an hour before it acts up again. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I'll do in these situations where you've got suspected intermittent problems with the sensor and how you can catch it the first time. We're gonna use the scope on this. You can also do it with a DVOM. As a matter of fact, we'll, we'll show it on the DVOM too. It's just not as, uh, not as visual, I guess, but you can do it with a regular DVOM. So the trick with this is we're gonna kind of defy what the uh, instructions would be from the service manual. The service manual is gonna have you put your, um, to, sense, to the signal, to the sensor signal, and then your other wire to a chassis ground and look for a signal. In my opinion, that's really stupid. The way I do it is I'm going to tap into the sensor signal wire and the ground wire on the sensor. That's the trick is using the sensor ground on the sensor and the brilliance of this will become apparent, I believe, once we get this set up. But what this is gonna do is when that sensor fails, we are gonna be able to tell the instant it fails, did we lose reference, did we lose ground, or did we lose signal? And we will know whether it's a bad sensor or whether we need to look elsewhere. And that's gonna be the trick. So let's get this set up real quick and I, will, um, I think this will make sense after we get some data. So I should have mentioned this, of course, is for a Hall effect sensor. Of course, on an inductive sensor, it's, it's a lot you know, more straightforward than this. But we've got a Hall effect sensor. We are on the signal wire and the ground. We are not even tapped into the reference. I know that that sounds counterintuitive, but there is a method to the madness here. I know someone's going to comment, well, you suck. You didn't tell us what wire colors it is. Um, yeah, that's because this works on any Hall effects sensor. All Hall effects are the same. Not all the wire colors are the same. So you got to stop looking at wires by color. You got to stop doing that. Look at wires by function. If I am on the signal in the ground, that is going to be the same on every Hall effect sensor on the planet, regardless of the wire colors. So what we're going to do is start the car. Hopefully it'll act up for us. All right, it did not. The car's running 
perfectly fine and we can see our signal here. Now we can also do this on the DBOM. As we can see, we've got a zero to five volt signal. So if we connect into a DVOM, what we would see on the DVOM is an average of that because it's not going to be nearly fast enough to keep up with that rapid signal. So we're going to see about two and a half volts or so here. Connecting it up right now. So as you can see, it jumps around a little bit as the idle changes, but we can clearly see we've got camshaft sensor activity there. Not as fun to watch that. Let's go back to the scope because it'll be a lot more apparent if we have an issue. What we're going to do is I'm going to get a screwdriver or something here. And sometimes when these sensors go bad, I already know this is a bad sensor, but sometimes when they go bad, you can tap on them a little bit. So I'm just tapping on it here. And it's not acting up for me right now. All right, we'll, we'll give this a, a minute or so and see if we can get it to act up. All right, there, there it is right there. And uh, there is our failure right there. So what I want to do is I want to stop this. This is all we need. We're done. We're going to be able to make a diagnosis. Now, had we done this on the DVOM, we would have just seen it steady at a straight five volts. That would be the equivalent here. Either case, we can use logic to determine what must be the issue. Okay, so looking at our screen here, we can see we've got our sensor operating right now. And if we move along a little bit, now here we start to drop out the sensor, and now our sensor has completely dropped out and we're stuck with a five volt signal. So we know from this, there is no other logical explanation. This has to be a bad sensor. Why? Because look at our voltage when the sensor fails. We have five volts. Reference voltage. So we did not tap in on a second channel to the reference. We don't need to because we can see that the reference is there. Because the reference voltage comes in from outside the sensor, had we lost reference voltage, we know we either would have lost reference or ground. That can't be a bad sensor because those are external to the sensor. We maintained our reference voltage. Did we lose the sensor signal because we lost reference voltage? Absolutely not. We still have the reference voltage. Now, think about it. Where is our ground at? It's on the sensor ground, not the chassis ground the sensor ground. Now do you see why I was on the sensor ground? Did we lose sensor ground to cause the loss of the signal? Absolutely not. How do we know? Because if we lost the sensor ground, we couldn't have the reference voltage showing because we're on the sensor ground. Had we lost sensor ground or reference voltage, we would have known this cannot be a bad sensor. So we know we've got the reference voltage, we know we've got the ground, but we no longer produce signal. Because we are tapped in at the sensor for the signal output, there is no other possible explanation. The sensor stopped producing a signal. That is a bad sensor. That is a bad cabinshaft sensor. And that's how simple it is. Now, there may possibly be, possibly one variable to this, but I have absolutely never seen it. And, and it's certainly not in, in any way the way that a sensor fails. It's possible that maybe somehow internal in the sensor, the ground from the reference uh, to the ground in the sensor could have somehow been compromised. Uh, again, never seen that happen. If you were concerned about that, possible variable, then obviously it'd be really easy. All you got to do is just move your one lead off of the sensor signal onto a chassis ground and you should have continuity. If you don't have continuity there, then of course you, you have an external ground loss. Uh, but if you have continuity, then that ground loss would have been internal in the sensor. Again, I don't think it's possible. I, I guess, well, I guess it's possible, but I, I don't think it's a concern. In this case, it doesn't matter. In either case, we know we have the ground, um, so it, it won't even apply here. But yeah, I, I suppose if you did not have your 
um, reference voltage anymore. I guess, I guess it's possible that you could have lost ground internal in the sensor. You couldn't have lost reference voltage internal in the sensor, though, because remember, you're measuring it by back pinning on the connector outside of the sensor. So again, just logical thinking. Um, actually, now that it's acting up, uh, let's just see if we can reproduce the symptom real quick. And nope, now it's working. <laughs> All right, let me see if we can get it to act up again. Ah, damn it. All right, well, I tried for like 10 minutes and I could not get the stupid sensor to act up again. So uh, incredibly intermittent and finicky, but you just need that one catch with this technique and you don't have to worry about catching it again. You're, you're able to make the diagnosis. All right, if you have no idea what we were doing here because you are not familiar with cam and crank sensors and Hall effect versus inductive, no need to worry. We have a resource. Just point your browser to my website at www.schrodingersboxqm.com. Look, all members can get 15% off AutoLine Pro smoke machines. Don't forget to download our free book and uh, enjoy that while it's free. But the main thing is you go to your videos here. And we keep going and going and going and going. Down past the basic electrical, which of course is very useful for understanding what we did. And you want to get here to cam and crank sensor basics one and two, and you will have a absolute 100% clear understanding. Even if you have no familiarity at all with cam and crank sensors, after these tutorials, you will have a full understanding of them. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this trick useful. We'll see you next time.